Hello, good evening, good evening. Good evening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait about, well, I'll wait about a minute and I'll let some people get their notifications and we're gonna hop right in it, okay? And I like to go ahead and do that when I am hosting the class because I like for people to be able to come on in and get started and not have to wait a long time. So I'll wait just a moment and then we will hop right in. So as you're coming on, just say hello. Let me know how you're doing. If you are catching this live, hello. If you're catching the replay, hello. How are you? And good evening. So we'll wait a moment and we will get started, okay? And I'm gonna grab my other device real quick just to make sure I am live. Just make sure I'm live that way. Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So first I am going to share with you all the ingredients that I have. So of course, depending on what type of po' boys you're making, you wanna make sure you have your meat. So today I'm making shrimp, but when it comes to po' boy sandwiches, you can do beef, you can do fish, you can do chicken, you can do whatever you like. So make sure you keep that in mind. I also have my shredded lettuce. This is gonna be a topping for my sandwiches. I also have some tomatoes that I have sliced up. Remember what I said, make sure you come prepared. So whenever you see this live, make sure you have all your ingredients ready, but at least you'll be able to pause it if you don't. Now, I have my bread. Now, normally I don't use the little mini loaves here, not loaves. These are mini, um, they're French steak rolls, but I only got the little ones because I'm cooking for the, the kids. But when I'm making my regular size po' boys, I get the regular size hoagie rolls. So if you've seen me make those before, then you know which ones I'm talking about. I have all of my seasonings. I have my sauces that I'm gonna use and we'll get to all of that. But I wanna do first things first. So the first thing you wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and make some French fries because I'm cooking for the kids. I'm literally cooking dinner right now. So I have my oven preheated to 400. So I'm gonna take some French fries. I like to get, get the uh, steak cut, steak cut, <laughs> I can't even talk. I like to get the steak cut French fries from Walmart. So I'm gonna make some of these. I'm gonna put those in the oven. And I'm gonna show you how this flows when you just do things in a certain order. So I'm gonna take some French fries and I'm gonna put them on my baking sheet. I just took a baking sheet and put some um, foil on it. And then that way, if you wanna do it this way, you will see how it flows and everything will be done at the perfect time. And I have my deep fryer here, which you can't see it, but I'm gonna deep fry my shrimp. So I prefer deep fry over pan fry, but you could do either one. But I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my oil. So if you are going to uh, pan fry or deep fry your shrimp, or well, if you're making some other type of meat, you wouldn't be deep frying it but I'm gonna go ahead and get that oil ready. That way, by the time I'm done doing this and getting this in, I can get my shrimp nice and battered and my oil will be ready, okay? And you'll be able to see that in just a minute. I'm gonna spray down my foil here and I'm gonna put these french fries right here on the pan. And you can serve your po' boys with whatever you want but usually the kids like fries, so I'm just gonna make some fries for them. 
and I can actually use all of these. The only thing about fries in the oven is you just wanna make sure you have a pan big enough where you can spread them out. You don't want them on top of each other, okay? So a couple of mine are, but I'm gonna get them spread out. And let me put that here so I can throw that in the trash. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of my Old Bay on my fries. And you just spraying that oil down so they don't stick to the bottom of your cookie sheet. And then I'm gonna spray a little bit more of my spray on top. And you can just add what you like. That Old Bay has a very good flavor, so I like to use it. So as you can see, I have my fries. I'm gonna put them in. And my oven is on 400. So I'm gonna wash my hands. Let me throw away that um, package in here. So I wanted to go ahead and get those in first because those are going to be the side for their uh, their po' boys, okay? So whatever side you're making, that's up to you. And I'm gonna just get this little area wiped down. Hmm, look like I sprayed it, hold on y'all. Let me use my other washcloth with my cleaner on it to wipe that good. Okay, and I can tell my oil is getting hot because I can smell it. <laughs> so I'm using vegetable oil for my deep fryer on today. I have it on 400. I would recommend 375 to 400. The highest temperature on your deep fryer is for seafood, so keep that in mind. Um, we don't cook high on, we don't cook our seafood high on the stove, but when you're using a deep fryer, which mine is right here, and you'll be able to see it. Let me make sure my, my cord did fall there. Oh, there it is. Hold on, you all. I knew it was gonna fall because my other part fell. But when you're using a deep fryer, you can put it up at your highest temp for your seafood. So let me see how I'm gonna keep that up there. So I use a Presto. I do recommend Prestos. <laughs> I haven't found one that works better than these yet. Um, they're very inexpensive. I get them at Walmart. Um, they have the larger versions and they have the, I think this is the smallest one, but they do have bigger ones. So I have it on 400 heating up my oil. So I'm gonna just sit this here and I'll pull it out more so you can see it once we get started with that. But now we're gonna go ahead and batter our shrimp. So whether you're making a po' boy or just fried shrimp in general, I'm gonna show you a way that you can do it. I have my shrimp here and your homework was to marinate your shrimp or your meat of choice. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna pour some of that water off, but I marinated my shrimp. It's at a, like a room temperature. You wanna let it sit out. The reason why you wanna let your meat sit out, like if you're making fried chicken or steak or something like that, is so it will cook evenly. Sometimes when you have it just so cold and you pull it out and you just want to cook it, it's, it, I don't know, it just don't cook right. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour off uh, this juice from the shrimp, just some water because these were frozen, but they have marinated a while. And then we're gonna go ahead and batter them up. So I'm gonna put my flour in here and some seasonings. And then I'm gonna show you the method of how I batter my shrimp. I have my basket here on a plate because I don't wanna just put it right into the grease and I'll show you why. Because if you put it all in there together, it'll stick together and you do not want your stuff sticking together. So I'm gonna put that there and I'm going to pour some of this juice off of here and then we will batter this shrimp. Ooh. Oh, honey. Hold on, let me rinse my hand. I'm not gonna wash my hand yet because I need to add some mustard. Now mustard is a, something you don't have to use. I love to make mustard fried shrimp. So I'm gonna add a little mustard. And people always ask, does it taste like mustard? If you've tried this before, whether it's the mustard fried chicken, mustard fried shrimp, I didn't come up with the mustard method. But once I tried it, I noticed that it just added a certain flavor to it that I like. 
and it adds to like the color, I don't know, and the texture of my, my fried foods. So I like to add the mustard, but listen, leave it out if you don't like it, okay? Or if you don't wanna use it. Don't feel pressured to do that. So it's just a light coating there. I know it's kind of hard to see with the light. So I'm gonna rinse my hand. The oil is ready, but we're not ready for it. So, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to rinse my hand and then we're gonna go ahead and put our batter together so we can get our shrimp dropped in the grease. And once I get that shrimp down, I'm gonna look at the comments. When I'm in the flow, I'll be like just going, going, going. So if you're cooking with me, you should be able to follow right along. I'm not moving too quickly. And if I am, let me know. But I know some people weren't on time. So that's not my fault, honey. Because <laughs> I'll be here. I'm going to be on time. And if I'm not, I'll let you know. And if you're not, you let me know. And then we can start a little later. How about that? So I'm going to take some of my flour. And this is just all-purpose flour. I don't think it really matters. You can choose what you like. But I'm gonna tell you something about me. I would go in the store and whatever the least expensive sometime, that's what I'll get. So I'm gonna put a little flour in there. Remember I told you all to have some Old Bay. I did not marinate my shrimp in Old Bay because this has sodium and I don't want my shrimp to soak that up. So I use some Saison and Adobo to marinate my shrimp because it won't make it salty, just flavorful. So now we're gonna add a little bit of our salt in there, which is not much, just depends on how much you use. So I'm gonna put a little bit in my flour. And then I'm gonna also sprinkle a little bit on my sandwiches, so I'm not gonna use much. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of my Saison in my flour. All of this, of course, is optional, okay? But I want you to try it, I really, really do. That Saison especially. So now we've given our flavor, our flour some flavor. Now you can add whatever you like in your flour. But now when it comes to battering our shrimp, this is what I like to do. You don't have to have a glove. But I like to take a few shrimp at a time and, and put them in my flour. And I don't want them together because I don't want them to cook together. So I'm just spreading them out around the flour. Okay, you could probably see me dropping them in there. And now I'm just gonna mix this around like this and add a little more. Now, if you had like a dish, like sometimes I'll take like a tray, uh, not a tray, but like one of my aluminum pans, the long ones, and I'll spread the flour out, not much. And you can kind of just drop your, your shrimp in there and then kind of shake it around. That way your, flour, your uh, shrimp gets coated one at a time and they're not getting coated together. That's what you don't want. You don't want them to coat together because then they're, they'll fly, they'll fly, <laughs> they'll fry together. <laughs> That's like a tongue twister. They'll fly together, but fry together. And they really will, they'll stick together. So I'm gonna mix it around some more. And when I take them out, they're gonna be individual. They're already individualized. So you can do whatever method that works for you. I'm pretty sure you all have some pretty good methods that work, just like I just do what works for me. I just do not want them to touch. So that's enough shrimp. We don't want to overcrowd our grease. I got all of them nice and coated. Didn't even have to get my hands dirty, honey. <laughs> so now I'm going to put them in my basket here. And I'm trying to get them. I'll just have to pick them up one by one. I was trying to pick them up all, but I don't want to put a lot of flour in my my oil. Oh, you know what? I can do that because all I can do is just shake it. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Since I have it on the plate already, I could just take my thing and shake it like, like a sifter. <laughs> that works for me. So now you can see my shrimp, okay? And now I'm gonna drop them in. Once you drop them in, shake them. Then 
They're gonna cook really quick. <laughs> they only take about one to two minutes, like literally. Your grease is already at the highest it can go. I'm on 400 degrees. And you want your shrimp to be done, not overdone. And I'm gonna show you something. Shaking it prevents it from sticking together or sticking to the bottom of your basket. And these are done. And I'm gonna tell you something. Look at that. The reason why these shrimp are done so quickly because they're small. These are smaller shrimp. So if you have larger shrimp, you wanna go, I wouldn't go longer than three minutes on a shrimp. So when I have extra large shrimp, three minutes max, okay? These are small, like when I say small, they're small, as you can see, but they are done. And I'll break one open for you in a minute. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same method with the rest of my shrimp. The only thing is I can't really do the same thing with my, uh, my flour, I gotta really just take my time with that. So depending on if, if you've made another, uh, let me see, let me go back. Okay, so I don't see any comments. I guess no one is making shrimp tonight. So that's okay. That's perfect. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. So let me put that in the trash. And let me see. So let's just say you wanted to use chicken for your po' boy. All you would do is choose your type of chicken. I would go with more of a either chicken tenderloin or chicken breast. And I only got one more glove, so I'm gonna go ahead and put drop some of these in here. Chicken tenderloin or chicken breast, you can cut it up or you can uh, pan, you know, pan cook it and then, you know, chop it up and put that on your po' boy. Um, your shrimp, if you don't wanna fry it, that's what I mentioned earlier is that if you don't wanna fry it, then all you have to do is you can bake it. Even like we're doing our fries right now, you can, um, you can pan cook them, you can air fry your shrimp, they don't have to be fried. I know everybody doesn't like fried, you know, po' boys and that's fine, or you're trying to stay away from fried food, whatever the case may be, or whatever kind of, you know, meat you wanna use, you can use for this, this type of sandwich. So I have one, two, three, four, I'm feeding four people today. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook the rest of these. That's why I use a whole bag of shrimp. But normally I do about maybe five or six shrimp per po' boy. But today I'm making a little mini sandwiches. So I should have a few left over actually at the end. But I want you all to see how these turn out. That way, if you decide to make them, then you can see how they should uh, turn out. Now I got some oil in my basket, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and drop them in one at a time. And like I said, however you choose to do yours, it's completely fine. I just don't like the extra flour in my grease, <laughs> even though I don't reuse it, which is really funny. But I mean, I reuse it while I'm cooking, but once I'm done, I'm done. Whether I'm frying chicken or whatever, I do not reuse grease. I don't, I can't, I won't, okay? But I will, I guess, if I had to, but I don't have to, so I don't. But I also don't fry a lot, so that works. I think if people fry a lot of foods, then that's different, but I really don't fry a lot. Okay, you all, so these are gonna take like two seconds. So I'm about to drop these in, as you can see. Drop them in, give them a few seconds. And I'm gonna shake it, make sure they're not sticking together. While my hand is like this, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here. And I didn't see anybody was cooking with me, so if you are, forgive me, because I didn't see it. But if you're catching the replay and you're making it, please let me know how it turned out for you. I do recommend you marinate your shrimp in the, um, 
the saison and the adobo and then add a little bit of that um, Old Bay into your flour. So let me take this and this and move that out the way. They're done. <laughs> y'all, these shrimp look so good. Oh my God. Can y'all see that? Do y'all see them shrimp? Oh my goodness. I gotta take a picture of that. I'm on my picture phone. Okay. Let me go ahead and put these shrimp. And Ali is asleep, so I can't have her come. But I'm gonna wake her up. She gonna wanna be woke up for this. But my other daughter, Layla, is here. Mm -hmm. So this is how easy it is. So when you're making fried shrimp, I mean, I know these are really tiny, so it's taking, you know, a short amount of time to cook them. But like I said, if you just trust me and you only fry your shrimp for literally no more than three minutes, I'm telling you, when they're big, the jumbo shrimp, you don't wanna overcook them and you will have the perfect shrimp. Last one's going in. I'm gonna give it a second. And I'm gonna shake it. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here. are just about done. This is a quick meal that you can make like on a Friday night. So hopefully some of you all will, well, you will always be able to come back and revisit this live whenever you want. But come back and try it. I'm telling you, your family will thank you. I'm gonna put this up. The french fries are going good. I'm going to shake them a little bit. French fries are good. So that's perfect. And we are about to finish this up. I'm going to turn this oil off. Take these out. And then we are going to get our bread ready. And by the time we put these sandwiches together, it'll be time to take those fries out. Oh my God. Y'all, these shrimp are perfect. I gotta taste one. Mmm. Mmm. All right, let me calm down. Okay, calm down, Tifa. All right, now, let me see. I'm trying to see. Oh, I could just take it out right here. I'm trying to unplug this without that thing falling. All right, so I'm going to move this over. Let me move this grease over on out the way. Here I have my flat griddle. And all we're doing is we're warming up our bread. Now when you're making po' boys, they're really good when you warm up the bread, but you don't have to. You don't have to. It is an extra step, but I want to. These shrimp are so good. We move them over so they don't get knocked over off the counter. <laughs> I'm gonna be mad, honey. And I feel like I just need to wipe this.
You all, you can make amazing sandwiches right at home. I promise you. I promise you. Your food be so good that you'll be mad at yourself when you have to eat out. And not even have to when you choose to. That's how I am on days like when I, I know that it's something that I want and I know I can make it. Because I can make anything I want to eat. So... Then I, you know, I give in to the temptation of ordering out and then I'm highly disappointed because, and like I said, all the time, it's not that the food is bad. It's just that it arrives cold or it arrives old or, you know, maybe something that the dasher did. So it's not always the, the restaurant's fault, you know, but when you could have just went in the kitchen, <laughs> got about the bed and just went and did it yourself. Um, so what I'm doing here, this is a chicken dipping sauce and an aioli. Okay, so I'm just putting them in the microwave because I'm going to warm them up. And I got to put something over that. And I'm going to go ahead and warm those up. And again, I'll show you what they are. It's just an aioli and a chicken dipping. So these are not sauces you have to use. Now, using either the aioli or, um, what's the one I like to use? There's another sauce I like to use on my uh, po' boys. I can't think of it right now. But you can use all kind of sauces on your po' boys. It just depends on what you like, as well as your toppings. So you don't have to necessarily use the toppings that I use. I, I got lettuce and tomato. You can use pickles, jalapenos, whatever you want or whatever your family wants, whatever, whatever. So we'll leave that sauce there for the time being. I'm gonna take a little butter and put it here on my flat top. I got it on 350, that shouldn't be too bad. I usually use this for like pancakes or breakfast food, but I'm gonna take a little butter. It seems kinda high. I don't want it too high. <laughs> we want our bread to be warm, but we don't want it too high. So because I'm cooking for the girls tonight, I got these little small rolls, but you can get the big, the big, um, they're called hoagie rolls, but these are little miniature ones. So I'm going to put these on here for the girls. I'm going to make a couple at one time. That way I don't have to worry about it. So that's the good thing about the griddle. Uh oh. Layla and Aaliyah wanted about two or three a piece, so that's probably not gonna happen because I only have what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only have eight, and the griddle is able to hold all eight, if you all can see that. So I got my sauces, I'm gonna stir those up. I said what I love about Po Boys is they're versatile. You could do what you want, honey. Oh yeah, that looks good. Mm-hmm. That was a good idea to warm those up. I already know it's gonna be banging. All right, so I'm gonna give them a minute, then I'm gonna turn them over and let the other side get warm. Let's see. Just about. Well, we can go ahead and turn them over because they are warm. The main thing is you just want to get them warm. As you can see. Mm, 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 mm. So while they're on this side, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and brush on some. All right, I'm gonna take my chicken dipping. And 
and just put this on the inside. I've already turned the griddle off so we don't have to worry about it. But they're nice and toasty. They're warm. That's what you want. It's just going to add to the experience, honey. <laughs> so you can use mayo, whatever kind of sauce you like. I do recommend a sauce. I guess I should, let me see. I need a little bit more of that. But I may just have enough to stretch it. Hey, we made it, because I'm going to take some from over here. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now, as you can see, they're nice and toasted. They are so warm and soft. Oh, that's what you want. So I'm going to start layering them here, not layering them, but, you know, opening them up here. We're not going to be able to put many here because on the serving dish, I was looking for my other serving dish. Let me see real quick if I can grab it. It's up here and I can't see. There it is. Okay, this is what I was looking for, not, not the small one. I have so many serving dishes up in my cabinet and sometimes I'm just too short to see what's going on up there. So I'm just gonna lay them side by side here so we can get ready to put our toppings inside. Oh, they're so warm, it smells so good. The fragrance is wonderful. And I think we'll just have to put these two aside because I don't wanna have too many on here and we can't get everything on here that we need. So we're gonna move this out of the way. All right, you all can see, great. So we have our shrimp. Put that there, there we go. Here I have some lettuce. Here I have some tomato, and I just had everything cut. I cut everything before we started, so, and I cut my tomatoes, instead of having them the whole slice, I cut them in half because I knew I was using the mini rolls. So if I'm using the whole hoagie roll, I leave them as a whole, you know, as a slice. So that's why I cut them that way. I have my aioli that's warm, so we're gonna put some of that on there. And I have my garlic and herb obey, so that's something I'm gonna sprinkle on the top. So let's get these babies loaded up. So with your, you can do what you like, how you like it. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of lettuce. I love the little mini ones um, because that way, you know, you're not pressured to eat a whole lot of bread or a whole big hoagie. And they're just perfect for kids or even like parties, maybe the Super Bowl, whatever you're doing. I like the little small little, I mean, I know the Super Bowl is over, but you know what I'm saying. You're having like a little party or something. These small rolls are really good. And you can even do little sub sandwiches with these. You can do all kinds of things with these little rolls. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little tomato. And I'm just going to put a little slice on each side here. Maybe I need to put two. Or well, maybe I do two on one side. That way we don't need too much tomato now. I'm the tomato lover. I don't think my kids love them the way I do. <laughs> I love tomatoes like I love mushrooms and onions. Yeah, I know how much I cook with those, so you can only imagine. Definitely a tomato lover. Okay now, honey. So you just put a little bit on each side. And then, ah, let me tell you, put some of them shrimp on there. Mm. 
mm -mm. It's gonna be on, y'all. How many of these can you eat? <laughs> My girl's so funny. I want two or three of them. I'm like, okay. But they can eat about two or three of them, too. They, you know, they're teenagers. Layla's 19 and Aaliyah is 17. Alana going to eat one. Child Bella coming right up behind them. And I still have enough shrimp to do the other two. Can y'all see this? I still have enough shrimp to fix the other two. That was a perfect amount of shrimp. Perfect amount. So we're gonna do a little bit of aioli. And I'm only gonna put aioli on a few of them, but just in case all of them don't want any. So I'll just put aioli on three of them. And I'll give y'all a close-up. <sighs> oh, babe. It's not spicy. It's just the garlic and herb. So, let me get y'all. Let me move this so I'm not over my food. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Let's come over here so you all can see. So we lost the shrimp. <laughs> there we go. So let me know what y'all think. Jean, you made it. Thank you, Shanika. Thank you, Beverly. I love the intimacy. I didn't see anybody cooking with me, so I'm sorry. So these, these three here, I didn't put the aioli. I just put some on these three here. Lisa, how is yours, Jean? Oh, sounds good, Carcinia. Carcinia says, why do they... I don't know why my internet keeps stopping. I do not know why they call it Po' Boy. I don't know. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> okay, you all. So I'm going to feed the girls. Don't forget, on Thursday, we're doing chicken spaghetti. Did I post the ingredients for you all today? I was working on it. I've been working on some things today, you all. I cannot wait to share with you all some things. OMG. Okay, so I've been busy today working on something that I have about to launch. So um, if I did not, I'll go back and check. I'll post the ingredients for the chicken spaghetti for Thursday. Bella's crying. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Beverly. So remember, if you have any questions for me, email me. If you have any suggestions of what we can cook, just let me know. And I will definitely get it into our rotation here. So you all have an amazing night and I will see you on Thursday. Well, I'll see some of y'all tomorrow for this butternut squash that Maggie got us making. <laughs> but other than that, you all have an amazing night.